And all you have to do is just prepare your heart to receive the touch from heaven. Because God is in a touching business right now. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Well, I want to turn your attention, first of all, to the book of Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 4. The book of Proverbs chapter 4. Amen. Proverbs chapter 4. And I want to look at verse number 20. It says, My son, attend to my words. Incline thine ear unto my saying. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thy heart. Now notice what it says in verse number 22. For they are life to those that find them. Oh, hallelujah. I feel the Holy Ghost on this. Verse 22 again. For they are life to those that find them and health. Now notice what he said. To all their flesh. Amen. And health to all their flesh. See, God not only want you healed in your body, he want your flesh to be healed. Amen. What I mean flesh, this outer part, this, this part, what, see, this is the biggest organ that you have. This, 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 this outer shell is the biggest organ that you have because this is not the real you. The real you is on the inside of this shell. Amen. We're just a spirit man. Glory to God. But you can be healed right now if you just release your faith in agreement with me. Because, see, I'm setting myself in agreement with you for your healing. Today is the day for your breakthrough. For your breakthrough. Glory to God. It's my breakthrough. It's your breakthrough. God is good. And he is here right now. He is here. Amen. And so let's read verse number 22 again. Uh, Proverbs chapter 4 and verse number 22. For they are life. What is he talking about? They are life. He's referring to the word. The word. He said they are life to those that find them. His words are life to those that find them. Amen. And, and health to all their flesh. And that's why we are seeking God right now. And we are believing God for a closer walk. We are believing God that, you know, we believe in God that, 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 that we can... That, that uh, you know, as he said in John chapter 14, John chapter 15, I mean, he said, abide in me and I abide and I and you apart from me, you can't do nothing. So as we draw closer to God and as God draw closer to us, now his spirit is already in us. His nature is already residing in us as born again, children of God. But as we draw closer to him, by acknowledging our wrong, our error, our sicknesses, amen, uh, our, our sins that cause the sicknesses, amen. As we, we draw close to God, acknowledging our wrong, and let me tell you something. Because, see, sin stops the blessing from flowing. If you, if you know anything about the blessing, now, now, now I, I've been hearing some good teaching on the blessing lately. But when there is sin in your life, sin stops the blessing from working on your behalf and it begins to work against you. Amen. Begin to work against you. Well, Saul, of, Saul is a, a prime example of that. Amen. He was anointed to be king. But as he uh, disobeyed God, the anointing that he carried as a king began to work against him. Amen. So we know that the anointing it's, it's from God, but we know that the anointing will, will work against us if there's sin in our lives. So, first of all, let us, let us pray one more time. Because, see, we need to make sure our heart is ready to receive what God is about to do in our life right now. Amen. Let's pray one more time. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I'm asking you, Father, on the behalf of those that are truly looking for a touch from heaven. The Lord God, that should there be any sin in our lives. Father, that we will repent of that sin immediately. And should we have ought against our brother, father, our sister, Lord God, or, or any man for that concern, because you said to owe no man nothing but to love him. So we have ought against anyone, Father. We ask you, Father, in the name of Jesus, to forgive, to for, to, 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 to we've, to, to, that we've had the opportunity to, to forgive them right now. So if you have an ought against someone, just 
go to that person. Call that person. If you can't go to that person, call that person right now and make things right in your heart. Because see, you don't want nothing to block your breakthrough. You don't want nothing to block your miracle. You don't want nothing to block to block your healing. If you have all, if you are, if you have uh, anger, bitterness, or strife in your heart toward anyone, right now, just forgive them. Amen. Forgive them and let God enter into your heart. See, God created you to walk in peace with all men. Because see, God don't. God, you know, if God get angry, I I never really seen God angry. I have seen Jesus upset when when he came to uh uh when, when, uh one time or two in the Bible. But the thing about it is that God wants you to focus on you. He wants you to focus on you because see, you are your biggest problem. <laughs> it's not the people that that you that that are upset with you or, or the ones that you upset with. You are your biggest problem. Just like when I'm going through changes, when I'm going through situations, experiencing th different things in my life, I am my biggest problem. How did I become my biggest problem? My mouth. My mouth make me my problem. Amen? Because if my mouth don't line up with the word of God, I'm hurting myself with what I say. And it's the same thing with you. Amen? There's no different. It's the same thing with you. If you are not concerned about what coming out of your mouth friend your words can hurt you that's why i like what it says right here in the book of proverbs it says in verse number 20 chapter 4 and verse number 20 it says my son attend to my words he said attend to my words amen then he tells us why he wants us to attend to his words amen look at verse number uh, uh verse number 20 21 he said let them not depart from thine eyes he said, attend to my words and let them not depart from your eyes. Amen. And then he tells the verse number 22 said, for they are life to those that find them. For they are life. What is life? The word of God. The word of God is full of life, folks. When we understand what God is saying in his word, God's word will begin to work on our behalf. Let me tell you something. I used to be very sick. When I was a young man growing up, I was so sick. My sick was sick. Amen. Everything, I mean, everything I was going through in my health and everything, it's just like there was no way out. But one day, I was lying in my bed, and I was just laying there. I was in so much pain, and God spoke to me real firm. He said, get up and read your Bible. So I got up, and I opened up my Bible, and I turned to the book of Mark chapter 16. So turn your Bible with me right now to Mark chapter 16. To Mark chapter 16. Amen. And, uh... I just want to show you what God showed me. And when God showed me that, I tell you, my heart began to leap with joy because I've been reading the Bible all this time and I had never seen what, what I'm about to show with you, share with you right now. I had read my Bible, I don't know how many times, but I never did see what God showed me. But when he showed it to me, it was just like revelation knowledge. It was revelation knowledge because from what he showed me, it caused me to believe God and release my faith for healing. And let me tell you something. I'm still walking in that healing today because of what God showed me. Amen. And I've been teaching others and they've been, I mean, people coming back to me with testimony. Matter of fact, this, uh, this truck driver, uh, he was he's one of my church members. And he, was, uh, he started this job driving a truck. And he was riding down the road. He become to be get, begin begin to be in so much pain, hurting so bad. Amen. And he couldn't just pull off the road and go to the go nowhere. So he 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 remembered what I've been sharing with him in the Word of God. Well, I'm gonna get back to that story with you in just a minute. But notice what the Word of God says right here in verse number 15, John uh, Mark chapter 16, verse number 15. It says. And he said unto them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. How many know that the preaching of the gospel is, is all, it, it, uh, is involved healing? Amen. It involves healing. If you're going to preach the gospel to the sick, they, they, they don't want to hear nothing about, they don't want to hear nothing about uh, uh, money. They want to hear something about healing. Amen. So it says, it says, go into all the world and preach the gospel. And so as I begin to hear, as I begin to go, and preach, as I begin to read that, I'm thinking, I said, well, I, God, you, I, you did call me to preach, but God, how can I go to the nation? How can I go to the world? How can I go to your people when I'm sick myself? Amen. When I'm sick myself. And so I began to uh, just read the verse a little bit more, and I kept on reading. And in verse number, 
verse number 15, just read the whole entire scripture now. And he said unto them, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, and he that believeth not shall be damned. Amen. And then verse number 17 and 18 are the main scriptures that stood out strong to me. Amen. It's, I mean, they really just jumped off the page right into my heart. Right into my heart. Amen. So it's verse number 17 said, And these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. It, and these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. Then I, I, after I read that, and I just kept reading, just like I'm going to do right now. And these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. Shall they cast out devils? They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and it shall recover. Well, that caught my attention. Because I was so sick, I was sitting there crying and hurting. And God said, get up and read your Bible. And my Bible opened up to this particular section of Scripture. And so I began to read this, these Scriptures right here that I'm sharing with you today. Amen. Now, as I was reading these Scriptures, I'm thinking that he that believeth, he that believeth that is baptized shall be saved. And he that believeth not shall be damned. So that, I, I was already saved. But I just wasn't walking in the, in the fullness of being saved because... I was hurting, I was wounded, I was bruised. I mean, I was so in pain. But the God that I serve, he revealed himself to me that day in that house. I mean, out there, in the, out there by the cotton fields. You ever, I don't know, some of you might know what I mean by cotton fields. See, I'm from Alabama, and they have, we have cotton fields in Alabama. Amen. And so I was living in a house right beside a cotton field, a big cotton field. And, uh, and I was, li I was, by I lived, I lived alone. And so I was laying in my bed and I was crying. Didn't have no money to go to the doctor. Didn't have money to, to, to even for a doctor bill, even if I went to the doctor. Amen. I was poor. My poor was poor. Amen. I was hurting, poor and everything and no, no. And, and then, and didn't have, didn't have the sin of the accident for help, but I had enough heart to hear what God was saying to me. Amen. See, this is the, this is something this, this goes beyond the carnal thing because, see, we think we have to reach out to a man or woman and our, our brother or sister when we are hurting. When God, said, God, God wants us to put him first. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Matthew 6, 33. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness or his way of doing things. I call, it, I call it his way of doing things. Amen. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added to you. Well, you know. I begin to believe the word of God. What he's saying right here in verse number 17. He said, and these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. Shall they cast out devils? They shall speak. How many of you know that sickness and disease is not coming from God? If it's not coming from God, it's coming from the devil. Amen. There's no, there's no in between. If it's not coming from God, then it's coming from the devil. Amen. And so I looked at that sickness as an attack on my health. Amen. And that's what I and that's what I looked at. That's where I saw it. I saw it as an attack on my health. And so and these signs shall follow them that believe in my name, shall they cast out devils, they shall speak with new tongues, they shall take up serpents. They shall, if they drink in their things, shall not hurt them. And then when I got down to this part right here, they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Well, my God, that really got my attention then. I began to see this and I began to look at I, I mean and he said, read it again. So I began to read again. These signs shall follow them that believe in my name. So I began to look at the signs that will follow them that believe. I began to, to search, you know, read below. Because when he said, these signs shall follow them that believe in my name, he, show, he shows us the signs right here in the same scripture, verse number 17, and then in verse number 18. Amen. He shows us the signs that's supposed to follow them that believe. Well, it took me a few times of reading this over and over and over to get it. But when I got it, my oh my God, it really lit up in my in my heart like a like a like a like a bright light, like never like I'd never seen before. But when that light lit up in my heart, it was it illuminated my inward parts. Amen. It illuminated my inward parts, and my understanding became fruitful of what God was saying. You know, you can read something you don't have an understanding of. You 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 don't you just can't you just can't do nothing with with it because you don't know what it's saying. But when you know what it's saying, then you can apply it to your life. So what I saw here, what I saw here, I began to read it. I kept reading it over and over and over and over. And then all of a sudden, 
I saw what God was saying to me. He said, and these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. They shall cast out devils. They shall speak a new tongue. They shall take up serpent. If they drink in the devil's thing, shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Well, I always thought you had to call for the elders to come lay hands on you. I never thought that, that this scripture, I could take this scripture literally and just, and just apply it exactly as it's saying right here. But let me tell you something. That's exactly what I did. That's exactly what I did. I was hurting. I was so sick. My body was aching and in pain. But when I saw this scripture, I mean, I, it just, it, it took me a while. I just kept reading it over and over and over so until it began to register in my spirit. We call it meditating on the word. Amen. Meditating on the word. And when it began, to, when it settled in my spirit, then I started, I started looking at it real good, real strongly. Then I said, God, I don't see you asking for the apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher, or the presbyter to come and lay hands on me. But I do see in your word, I do see in your word that I can lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. And I say, God, when I'm sick, my body is sick. And you didn't, and you, and you'd never show, in verse number 17, you said, these signs shall follow them that believe. And I said, God, I believe. I believe. And these signs shall follow the beliefs. I said, well, I'm a believer. And my body is sick. I have hands. It was just this simple, folks. I didn't, re I didn't have no idea what was going to happen. I just read the scripture, understood what it was saying. Then I applied what it was saying. I said, God, my body is sick. It's in so much pain right now. And, and, and uh, you said I, the, the believer can lay hands on the sick. This is, these, this is part of the sign that will follow the believer. I'm a believer. And this sign shall follow them that believe. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Well, I saw that and I laid my hand on my body. And I said, in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, I rebuke this sickness out of my stomach. Ulcer, I command you to go from me in the name of Jesus. And I tell you what, my stomach immediately stopped hurting. Stop hurting. I used to have to drink a bottle of Melanta every day. Every day, a bottle of Melanta. Until they come out with that Zentac 75. Then I started taking Zentac 75. Amen. But it, it never would stop my stomach from hurting completely. But that day, in my room, in my bedroom, with my Bibles laying up across my ironing board, and I have a chair pulled up to that ironing board, like using it for my desk, because I didn't have a desk. I used my ironing board as a desk, and I had my chair pulled up to it. Amen. I had all my Bibles laying up there. I had the Amplified Bible, the Living Bible, the Open Bible, <laughs> the King James Version. I had all the Bibles laid up across the ironing board, so that I could just go from one to the next, uh, just reading what it, what it's saying about this scripture in this, ver this 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 Bible, then in this Bible, then in this Bible, so forth and so on. And 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 you know what? It began to make sense to me. It, not only did it make sense to me, it made faith to me. Faith will work for you when you understand how to apply correctly. See, God will not work on his God word won't work outside of faith. God word. You can read this word all you want to. And I tell you what, it sounds good sometimes when you read it, too. But it's not going to work for you until you learn to release your faith with it. Amen. You got to believe what you're reading. You got to believe the word of God. You got to believe it. And so I'm sitting there and I'm just reading the word of God. And then I said, God, I have hands. My body is sick. And I, and I, you said I can lay hands. The, the believer can lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. I said, God, here's some hands. I just held them up to God just like this. I said, God, here's some hands. I held my hands up to God. Here's some hands. And I said, God, you said they could, that you, I, as a believer, I can lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. So I said, here's some hands. My body is sick. And I laid my hand on my body. And I rebuked that sickness in the name of Jesus. And I commanded to leave my body because this temple is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Amen. I am not my own. I've been bought with a price. And so you need to realize that. Like, just like I did. And let me tell you something. I laid hands on my body. I rebuked that sickness. And that sickness went away from me. And I never had it again. Never had it again. Now, folks, that was back in 1989. That was back in 1989. Now, look how far I've come since then. And I've never had that sickness come on me again. Not only did I have this sickness that was eating up my body because of the lifestyle that I lived as a child, a young man growing up, 
I mean, I, 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 messed, I messed up the way I was living. I messed up uh, drinking and smoking and everything else. I messed my, I messed my whole, I messed my health up pretty bad. But thank God for the word. Thank God for redemption. Thank God for, for salvation. Thank God for deliverance. Amen. I was so, I was messed up with the drugs and alcohol and everything. You know what? God loves you right where you are. Right where you are. You don't have to go somewhere special to get, to get a touch from heaven. You can get a touch from heaven right where you are right now. Amen. How do I know? Because I'm a living witness that the word of God will work for you when you release your faith and believe the word of God. Amen. Because tonight I'm releasing, I'm, I'm, I'm believing with you and I'm releasing my faith with you because I want you to hear what thus said the Lord. And I want you to receive what God has prepared just for you. Amen. Just for you. Now, hallelujah. And so, uh, and so it says here in verse number 18 again, he said, and they shall take up serpent. And if they drink any of the other thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Well, I was teaching this in my church. I mean, pretty regular for a while because there were some people in there that were pretty, you know, pretty sick. And so I started teaching healing, started ministering healing practically every other service. And then all of a sudden I had one of my, all of my people started getting, they begin to get healthy. No more sickness. Until one day, this truck driver that was in my church, he went on the road and he started learning to drive the big rig, you know, the 18-wheeler. And the truck was so noisy and so, uh, uh, I don't know what's all wrong with it because uh, he didn't tell me all that. But he, what he did tell me, he said, he's a pastor. He said, while I was driving the truck, I had one of the greatest migraine headaches that I've ever experienced. And, and I remember what you taught us in the word concerning this scripture, Mark chapter seven, chapter, chapter 16 and verse number 18, they shall lay their hands on the sick and they shall recover. Amen. He said, I remember what you have been teaching us. And when I got that headache, cause see, I used to have migraine headaches too. And so I was, t I applied the same method that I applied to my stomach. I applied the same method to my head. Amen. Because I used to have, my, along, with the, along with the stomach aches I used to have, I had migraine headaches at the same time. It's just like the devil was riding my back. I'm telling you, he trying to ride me like a, 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 a stallion. Amen. Like I was a stallion. Let me tell you something. I bucked him off. <laughs> and you can buck him off too. Amen. You can buck him off too. So I had the migraine headaches and I, I applied the same method. I said, God, I'm coming to you again. My body is sick. I have a headache. Now, Father, this is my grand headache. I can take aspirin. I can take Tylenol, Father, but nothing is working for me. And I said, God, I'm going back to your word, what you showed me. You said that I can lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. And you said these signs shall follow them that believe. And I believe, Father, if I lay hands upon my head, that my grand headache is going to go. And so I applied the word of God one more time. This time, I said, God, here go my hands. My head is hurting. I'm sick. Here go my hands on my head. And I said, I rebuked this migraine headache and I command you to leave my body and never return. Friend, let me tell you something. That migraine headache left me and it never returned. It left and never returned. Glory to God. Glory to God. And now this truck driver, let me go back to him. He was riding down the road and he got this migraine headache. He didn't have nothing in the truck to take. No aspirin, no Tylenol, no nothing. He said he was hurt. He felt like about the bust open, and he said, "Pastor, but I remember what you. I remember what you were teaching." He said, and so as I was driving one hand on the steering wheel, I I, I raised one hand to God. I said, "God, my I, I'm sick and I can't I can't stop. I got to keep driving." And I, I, I you said these signs are following that believe in my in your name. I believe in your name, and I got a hand that I can lay hands on the sick. And he laid his hand on his head and he said, "Pain in the name of Jesus, I rebuke you. And I command you to go." While he was still driving that truck. And he said before he could get the words out of his mouth, the pain left him and he never had another migraine headache since. Now, folks, 
if it, if a truck driver can have that kind of experience after after hearing the word of God, what about you? What about you? I've ministered to many people along this line about divine health and healing. Many people have come to me with testimonies on how they receive their healing. Amen. It's your turn now. It is your turn. Are you ready? Are you ready to receive your healing? It's your turn. I can't express that enough. I, but you have to, you got to want it enough to simply believe the word of God. Do you want to believe the word of God right now with me? Do you want to release your faith with me? Let's go to the book of Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10. See what I'm doing. I'm building up your faith right now. I'm building up your faith because the Bible says right here in Romans chapter 10 verse number 17. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So faith cometh. Faith doesn't just show up. Faith cometh. When does faith come it? Faith come it when you hear the word of God preached along the line that you're believing for. Amen. And I'm preaching right now on God's miracle healing power. Amen. One touch from heaven can change your entire health condition. One touch can change your entire health condition. It doesn't matter whether you're in Africa, India, America, uh, Asia, amen, uh, 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 in Indonesia, amen, China. It doesn't matter where you are, wherever you listen to this message at. The same God that healed my body can heal yours too. He can heal your body also. Are you ready to release your faith? I want you to do yourself a favor right now. Just make this declaration in your heart right now. Say this right here with me. Say, say, Father, today I will receive my healing. Matter of fact, I receive it now. Amen. That's simple. What we, what we did, we just made a faith statement. What, we, what do we do? We set the spiritual realm, the atmosphere over our lives we charged it with the word of faith. We charged the atmosphere over our life with the word of faith. There was nothing negative about what we just said. But faith was produced over your life. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so it says right here in, in Romans chapter 10, verse number 17, it said, so then so, so then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Now, I want you, since we're in chapter 10, I want you to look at another scripture here. Since we're over here, glory to God. Because I want to usher you right in the center of God's will concerning your healing. Concerning your healing. Amen. And, and as you believe the word of God, as you begin to stand upon the word of God, you will see the word of God manifesting on your behalf. Notice what it said in Romans chapter 10 and verse number 8. It said, but what saith it? The word is nigh thee. Notice what he said? The word is nigh thee. Even in thy mouth and in thy heart. Now notice what he said. That is the word of faith which we preach. I'm preaching to you right now the word of faith. The word of faith. Oh, hallelujah. Now, I want to take you to another scripture here. Oh, oh, I feel the anointing starting to rest right now. The anointing is starting to rest right now. Oh, the atmosphere is changing right now. The atmosphere is changing over you right now. Amen. I want you to pull, I want you to put a demand on the gift that God has set before you right now. Put a demand on the gift that God has set before you. Release your faith right now. 
because I'm telling you, your miracle is right here, right now. Your miracle is right here, right now. Now let's go to Mark chapter 11. Mark chapter 11. Oh, hallelujah. And let's look at verse number 22. It says, And Jesus answering said unto them, He's talking to them that believe in his name. Notice what he said in, in, uh, in over there in uh, Luke chapter, in Mark chapter 16 and verse number 17. And these signs shall follow them that believe. Well, he tells us right here in Mark chapter 11, verse number 22. And Jesus said, answered and said unto them, have faith in God. Well, who's he talking to? He's talking to them that believe in his name, that believe him. They, if they didn't believe him, they would not be following him. If they did not believe him, they wouldn't be following him. Amen. But notice what he said in verse number 20, verse number 23. For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say, that whosoever shall say, amen. Now, what was he telling us in, in, uh, in, 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 ver in chapter 16? Amen. He, he said, these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. Shall they cast out devil? They shall speak in the tongue. They shall take up serpent. If they drink of their things, shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Notice None of that happened without them saying something. You got to put voice to the word of God. You got to put voice to the word. Amen. You got to put voice to what you believe in your heart to be true concerning the word of God. So it says in verse number 23, it says, For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say, that means you got to say something. Unto this mountain, that's something that you're speaking to. Amen. That's the object that you're speaking to. Be thou removed. That's something that's in you that's bothered you that has to be moved out of the way. And it's not going to be moved just by you looking at it or by you thinking about it or by you meditating upon it. You got to open up your mouth and you got to start talking to it. Amen. You got to start talking to it. Amen. Be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt. In other words, leave your presence. Leave your presence. And shall not doubt in your heart. See, the only thing will stop this from working is that you allow doubt to govern your heart. If doubt come into your heart, the miracle that you're believing for will be stopped. You will not receive your miracle because doubt has stowed your miracle. Did you know that doubt is an enemy? And he has some friends too, fear and unbelief. These are three enemies that is always on their job trying to stop you from moving forth and believing God for your breakthrough, for your miracle, for your relationship, for your restoration, for your healing. Everything hinges on us believing the word of God. Everything. And so as we look at this, we can see right here in verse number 24, it says, Therefore I say unto you, see, you're still saying something. Therefore I say unto you, what things will you desire when you pray? So that if you're praying, that means you're talking. You're not thinking, you're talking. What things will you desire when you pray? Believe that you receive them. It said, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. You sh oh, glory to God. Glory to God. You see, I'm going to believe for your miracle today. I'm going to believe for your breakthrough today. I'm releasing my faith right now. Will you please join me? I'm going to release my faith right now, and I'm going to pray with you. Amen. I'm going to pray with you right now. Will you please release your faith with me? Amen. So, it's, Father, in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord God, for your word. For you had declared in your word in the book of Isaiah, chapter 53. You said, surely you had borne our grief and had carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him screaming and smitten of God and afflicted, talking about Jesus. And he was wounded for our transgressions, but he was wounded for our transgressions. And he was bruised for our iniquities and the chastisement of our peace 
was upon him, and with his stripes we, now notice what he said, are healed. Folks, that is present tense. We are healed. Hallelujah. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, in agreement with your word, you sent your word to heal. And God, we receive the benefit of your word working on our behalf according to Psalms 103. We receive the benefits of your word working on our behalf, Father, because you sent your word to heal. And now, Father, we receive right now by faith. I release my faith in connection with their faith and we receive right now by faith. Come on, let's come in agreement now. Let's come in agreement now. Let's all of us come in agreement right now. If you need a touch in your body right now, and I want you to lay your hand on your body right now where you need a healing at. Lay your hand on your body right now where you need a healing at. Wherever you need a healing at on your body, whether it's your head, whether it's your stomach, whether it's your heart, whether it's your leg, whatever, whatever the area that you need a healing on right now, I want you to lay your hand on that area right now. Amen. If it's your throat, if it's your sinus, lay your hand on your face. If it's your ear, Lay your hand on your ears, your eyes, lay your hand on your eyes. Amen. Oh, glory to God. If it's your liver or kidney, put your hand on your body. Because I'm going to release my faith right now. Now, Father, in the name of Jesus, I speak to the spirit of sickness, infirmity, and disease. I speak by the authority of him who have called me out of darkness into his marvelous light. I say sickness, disease, infirmity, be healed now in Jesus' name. And Father, I release the anointing that lift the burdens and destroy the yoke. Let that disease be healed. Let that sickness be gone. Let that healing manifest in their bodies right now in Jesus' name. And Father, I thank you. I praise you and I glorify you. Father, there's someone right now, you'll listen to me, and I just heard the Holy Ghost said, you need deliverance. You need deliverance. Right now. You need deliverance right now. Oh, glory. Oh, she came out of the Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. That demon that's been riding your back, today was his last day. He's not going to ride your back no more. Say this with me right now. I'm asking you from the bottom of my heart. I know I heard from God. And you need God on your side right now. Because that devil is riding your back. And he's trying to destroy you. Because that's his job. John 10.10 10 said the thief comes up for the steal, kill, and to destroy. Amen. But this is the purpose that the Son of God was manifest. To destroy the works of the devil. Amen. God is on your side. God is on your side. Amen. So right now, in the name of Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. Father, you said for this purpose, Lord Jesus, you said for this purpose. That you will manifest to destroy the works of the devil. Now by the authority that's been invested in me by the Lord Jesus Christ, the one who have empowered me to stand in faith concerning his children, I rebuke that demonic spirit right now, you spirit of lust, you spirit of, of torment, you spirit of anger, you spirit of bitterness, you spirit of strife, I rebuke Rebuke you by the authority of him who have called me out of darkness. Now, Father, I ask you in the name of Jesus, let the light shine upon the heart of that person right now. Let the light of glory shine upon the heart of that person right now. And Father, let that darkness be exposed and let that person walk free from that darkness right now. Be delivered now in Jesus' name. Come out of that person. Leave that person now in Jesus' name. And Father, I thank you that it is done. It is done. Now begin to praise God right now and thank him for your deliverance. Because 
God is working on your behalf right now. Right now. Those of you that need the healing, God is working on your behalf right now. Amen. And so I thank you, Father, for what you're doing right now. I give you praise and I give you glory for it, Lord. There's none like you, Father. I bless you. Now, Father, in closing, I pray for every man and woman that prayed these prayers with me, that released their faith with me. Let their faith not be hindered, Lord God. I rebuke and I remove every spirit of doubt and unbelief from them right now in Jesus' name. Let their faith rest in your word. And God, I thank you for what your son did on Calvary on our behalf. He laid down his life. A man who knew no sin became sin on our behalf that we may be able to live this life before you. If you're there today, you never made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, please say this prayer with me because today could be your turnaround day. This could be your greatest miracle. Amen. This could be your greatest miracle. Say this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart, create in me a right spirit and renew in me a clean heart. Jesus, I believe that you are the son of God that you die for my sin. Because I believe this and confess it with my mouth, today I am saved. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Amen. If you said that simple prayer, friend, you're on your way up. You're on your way up. I love you. God bless you. This is Pastor Larry Bergens, New Life in Christ Jesus Church, Sacramento, California. Be blessed until the next time. We'll see you then. Bye-bye.
get my heart right with you because see God I want your heart to be in tune with me as my heart be in tune with God, that God on your behalf you amen I believe so will you, I'm going to release my faith with you and I'm going to come in agreement with you for your miracle touch amen let us pray father I thank you for this day and I thank you for this time I thank you, Father, for your Holy Spirit. Glory to God. My glasses, please. I thank you for your Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this place. We invite you in right now. And God, I'm asking you that you would touch every man, woman, boy, and girl under the sound of my voice. Those that need healing in their bodies, Father, I ask you in the name of Jesus, let that spirit of sickness, that spirit of infirmity be bound right now in Jesus' name. You said in your work, whatever I bind in heaven is bound on earth. So I bind up that spirit of infirmity, sickness. God, it went bottom up. I bind it right now by the authority of <laughs> him who have called me out of darkness into his marvelous light. So, Father, I give you praise and I give you glory, Father. Now, Father, I release my faith for divine health and healing right now in Jesus' name. I curse every skin disease right now I curse every 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 skin virus right now in the name of Jesus and I bind